Hi friends, welcome back to the Dr Diblin YouTube channel. My name is Connor Diblin, I'm a fourth year medical student at King's College London and today I'm going to tell you all about the abstract reasoning section of the UCAT exam. First of all, if you haven't already had a chance, please do go and watch my full UCAT video. In that video I explain every single section of the UCAT, but in this video we're going to have a bit more of a detailed deep dive into the abstract reasoning section. So the abstract reasoning section was my best section of the UCAT exam or UKCAT when I took it back in 2013. But the section itself hasn't changed since then really. So I scored 900 uh, on the exam, which was effectively a full mark. So for the 2020 exam, the abstract reasoning section is gonna last 13 minutes and you're gonna have one minute at the start to read the instructions and get your bearings before you have to start that 13 minutes. The average score for 2019 was 638. In the abstract reasoning section, you're gonna be presented with 55 questions to answer in that 13 minutes. So it's pretty tight on time. And the key thing they're looking for here is your creativity, your critical thinking, and your problem solving. And so the way they're gonna test that is they're gonna include unrelated or distracting elements inside of those images that you're gonna see. In the abstract reasoning section, those 55 questions, you can have four different types of questions. So let's quickly talk through what each of those is. The first one is gonna be categories. So for the category section, you're gonna be given a set A and a set B of objects, and then you're gonna be given a test object and you've got to decide whether that object falls into set A or set B. So the second type of question in the UCAT abstract reasoning exam is the series. In these questions, you're going to be given a series of images and you've got to decide the next one in that series from an option. So you're going to have a op few options of images and you've got to decide the next one in that series. The third type of question you can be asked in the abstract reasoning section is statements. So in the statements section, you can be given a statement of images, except that one image in that statement is missing. And you've got to choose the image from the options that completes the statement. The fourth type of question in the abstract reasoning section of the UK exam is sorting. So in the sorting, similar to the first type into the categories type, you're going to be given a set A and a set B of shapes. Although this time you're going to be given several shapes and you've got to match whether each of those goes into set A or set B. My strategy for the abstract reasoning section of the UCAT exam is to remember that even though there are four different types of question, all of those questions are going to be based on the same types of image. And each of those images can really only be boiled down to six different characteristics inside of those images. And so there are six basic patterns that you can look for. And if you look at all of these, you're almost guaranteed to get the mark on that question. So those six basic patterns you can look for in the abstract reasoning section are the number of shapes, the different types of shape, the color of shapes, the symmetry of the shapes in the image, size of the different shapes in the image, and the relationship of the shapes to one another within the image. Everybody's brain works differently. And so I know that there are kind of mnemonics and things to try and remember those six different patterns you can look for. But I think the main way to remember in the exam how to look for the patterns is to have done practice beforehand. And so you've got to practice, you've got to work out which order you're going to look at the shapes in, which way you're going to look for the patterns. So it's going to be really important that when you're doing your practice, you come up with your own way of looking for those different things in, in those images. Remember, that just like in every section of the UCAT exam, if you get stuck on a question, move on and come back to it. This is, going to, this is true for all five sections of the UCAT exam. They're all so tight on time that as soon as you start worrying and kind of you can't decide between answers, just flag the question, move on, come back to it at the end. You're always going to get more marks by just quickly doing a question you're more confident in than you are by spending five minutes trying to work out one question. You've got 55 questions to do in 13 minutes, and so you've really got to speed through them. I know that I'm someone who always really loves to do exams like cover to cover and just try and work through the questions as they come up, but especially for the UCAT, it's so important that you just got to move on come back to it. And also remember, especially for the abstract reasoning section, that looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes or looking at it after another question, you might already be looking, you might be in the same pattern as in the last question. So you, you're much more likely to come back 
and just see it straight away. I think some people wonder why there's even an abstract reasoning section of the UCAT exam. I know it's used in lots of different kind of IQ tests, something similar to the abstract reasoning to try and test people's critical thinking and pattern recognition. And also, I think it can be loosely drawn back to especially radiography in medicine, where the first time someone looks at, say, a chest X-ray, they've got no idea what they're doing. They have no pattern for how they look at the chest X-ray. But after looking at hundreds, you can come up and you can look at it and you can go through your ABC and then you can look for diagnosis on there. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today, guys. I hope it was useful. If you think it might be useful for me to work through some abstract reasoning questions with you, then I'm completely happy to do that. We can do that either live or I can kind of pre-record that and release that like most of my videos. Please comment below if that's something you'd like to see.